Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Purpose Up podcast today. I am super excited to have with me Udo Erasmus. Welcome, Udo. Hey, glad to be on. And today we're not going to pur- today we're not going to purpose up. We're going to purpose in. Okay, I'm excited to <laughs> purpose in. So, Udo, you are a, um, a, a an author. You've written uh, both Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, and uh, Total Sexy Health, as well as you're the founder of uh, Udo's Choice. Healthline. So I'm excited to dig into all of this. Um, and, and before we get started, is there anything in your bio that I missed or that that's important for folks to know right off the bat? Uh, no, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm 77. I started my life in the Second World War. I got my nose rubbed into what happens when people don't uh, live consciously very early. And uh, my driver since I was six years old was, I, I, I listened to people argue and I was six years old. I thought what they argued about was trivial. And I thought, there has to be a way that people can live in harmony and I'm going to find out how. That's been my driver all my life. Went through science, bioscience, psychology, self-knowledge, all in the quest for an answer to that question. And that's kind of like what I I live for. That's that's beautiful background. We, We just had a conversation prior to hitting record about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I think it's important now in the time of Corona to talk about that because many people are hunkered down in survival mode. Um, But your Mm -hmm. um, uh, proposal was that self-actualization and um, these more basic needs can coexist rather than uh, the the hierarchy as, as Maslow would explain it. Right. Right. Because they're different things. You know, it's kind it's kind of like you don't just drink after you eat. You know, you need to eat and you need to drink too. And you need to breathe too. And you need to go to the bathroom too. And you need to sleep too. These are coexisting needs. And in some ways they take turns, but it's not like there's a, there's a, you know, you, if, if you, if you don't drink water, you don't need to go to the bathroom. Or if you drink water, you don't need to sleep. You know, you can't, it's, the one is not dependent on the other. They are coexisting needs. Each one has its own nature and each one needs its own fulfillment. All right. That, well, I'm excited to point. kind of dig into to both of those, kind of the, the, the healthy mind and body um, and how that relates to nutrition because I know it's all intertwined. So let's start with um, fat because I'm fascinated okay. with fat and, um, you know, uh, for me, it, it started with uh, weight loss and understanding what are the you know best ways to lose weight. So that's led me to intermittent fasting, understanding what what fats are good for me, and I also you know eat a primarily plant based diet. So it's all about okay, how do I get those really good fats? So um, I know your your <clears throat> scientific knowledge is really deep, but if we could at a high level, like what, how do we get the best fats for us, and what do people need to know at the most basic level? Okay. Okay. There's a, in the entire universe of fats, there are only two things you have to have. One is called omega-3 and one is called omega-6. Right. They're called essential fatty acids and they're called essential by a very specific definition, which is this. You can't make it in your body from anything else. You have to have it to live and be healthy. Therefore, you've got to bring it in from outside. That's part one. Part two is if you don't bring up enough in from outside, your health will go down. You will get deficiency symptoms. They are degenerative in nature. They will get worse with time. If you don't bring enough into your body long enough, you die. So this is like, this is the cornerstone of why food is important. You can't live without this stuff. So that's number two. Number three is if you've, you're deteriorating because you're not getting enough of any essential nutrient, but before you die, you bring enough back into your body, then all of the problems that come from not getting enough are reversed. And that's because life knows how to make your body using your genetic program that it created over the course of time. It knows how to do it, provided you take responsibility right here to make sure that optimum amounts of all of the essential nutrients land in your body so life can do its job. 
And that definition applies to 18 minerals, 13 vitamins, eight essential amino acids, or nine or 10, depending on who you talk to, and the two essential fatty acids that we just talked about, omega-3 and omega-6. Everything else from fats is optional. You don't, you know, you can have it and it's in foods, but you don't need it because your body can make all the rest of it from out of sugar and starch, but not the essential fatty acids and not the things that the body makes. And there's like dozens of different molecules that are made from the essential fatty acids in the body, provided you bring in, in optimize your intake if you want to be optimally healthy. All right. So there's there's a whole lot that you that you just shared with us there, and um, so you you highlighted the the omega threes and the omega sixes because we don't unable yeah. to produce those in the body. Uh, what are the yeah. best sources uh, of those? Um, <clears throat> where can we find them? Well, you find the, those in uh, seeds and nuts are the richest in fats, but you find some fat in everything. In, in greens, in fruit, in grains, in beans, uh, you know, like, but small amounts. And seeds and, seeds and nuts and can go 60% fat, and a percentage of that fat is omega-6, but omega-3 is harder to get. So uh, any, any seed and nut you eat, pretty much, will get you some, some omega-6s. But omega-3s, uh, soybeans have a little bit in the oil. Uh, walnut has a little bit in the oil. Canola has a little bit in the oil or mustard seed. Uh, and the biggest, the richest source easily available to us is flax seed. Uh, when I developed a method for making oils with health in mind, because these omega threes and sixes, super sensitive to damage by light, by oxygen, and by heat. So right. they're the most sensitive of our essential nutrients. They need the most care we actually give them the least care because we throw them in the frying pan and fry the hell out of them. <clears throat> and then we turn oil into smoke and you know that smoke is carcinogenic. In fact, cooks who spend eight, eight hours instead of just two in front of the frying pan, four times more lung cancer than normal people who spend two hours in front of the frying pan. They're breathing in the fumes of the cooking oil, the boiling oil that they're <clears throat> so you're changing the oils, you turn them from natural to unnatural. And what's unnatural, life never made a program for, and that's why many unnatural molecules are toxic. And this is like the dumbest thing we ever did to our food is, is to, to the invent frying our food in oils. Dumbest thing from a health perspective. So from does a, that from mean... A, so I want to yeah. dive into that a little bit more. So does that mean that <clears throat> cooking with oil is a bad thing or is it specifically frying and, and you know, what yeah. is okay and what's not okay there? Okay. Well, first of all, <clears throat> they're already damaged when you get the oils. They're half to 1% damaged. If they're 1% damaged in a tablespoon, you will get more than a million damaged molecules that are unnatural, that never existed in nature, that don't belong in your body more than a million of those for every one of your body's 60 trillion cells. So in that tablespoon, there are 60 quintillion damaged unnatural molecules. That's, a, that's bad enough. Then you throw it in the frying pan and you mess it up even more. And then you take two to four tablespoons a day, which is normal. And then you do that for 30, 40 years. And the research shows that when you burn foods, whether it's starch, or protein or fat, you increase cancer by each one of them independent of the others. So when you burn food, you increase your risk of cancer and cancer is a disease of toxicity, right? So, <clears throat> so fundamentally, if you look at nature standard, nature standard was everything you eat fresh, whole, raw and organic. So wherever you are and whatever your habits are right now, my recommendation is always start where you are, but deliberately head in the direction towards fresh, whole, raw, organic. So if you're, if you're deep frying, then shallow fry. If you're shallow frying, then saute. If you're sauteing, then put water in the pan before you put oil in it. If you're doing that, then take the oil out and just keep the water in the pan. 
And if you're, if you're boiling, then steam. And if you're steamed, then blanch. And if you're blanching, then go raw. So, and do that with as many of your foods as possible. The, the, um, uh, you know, when you fry foods, they fry your health. When you right. fry oils, they fry. So I say to people, fried oils, fry health. Repeat after me, fried oils, fry health, fried oils, fry health. And remember that every time you pick out your frying pan. So do this with your frying pan. Go get it, turn it upside down, hit yourself on the head with it really hard so it's associated with pain because it will give you pain. And then throw it out and cook your food in water. Now people say, oh my God, how could I, my steak? What am I gonna do with my steak? Well, we used to, when I was a kid in Europe, we used to cut the steak in cubes. We threw it in the stew with the vegetables and the spices. Tasted amazing. Wasn't toxic. All right. All right. This is, uh, this is some amazing information. So um, most of what you do in your cooking then is uh, boiled in water or raw. So is that safe to assume? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, the older I get, the more I go plant-based. Uh, plant-based always means plant-based whole foods, not plant-based white sugar and white flour right? Plant-based whole foods. And I, raw works really well for me, but I've been doing it since childhood. So I do, I eat most of what I have raw, but I make hot tea and, you know, occasionally beets. I can't, beets are scratchy in my throat. So when I re eat beets, I, I will cook those. And occasionally I'll cook something else. I don't have much starch in the house. I'm more, I'm more oil for energy based because oils have more energy. And, and fat has always been our store of energy. Because in your body, even if you're lean, let's say you're 8% fat, right. and you weigh normal weight, you can run 300 miles on half of that fat. But you can only store one pound of, of glycogen in your body that comes from carbs. And you can only run 20 miles on that. And we used to work with marathoners. And uh, we said to them, you guys, you're doing it wrong. You're, you, you're being told to carb load for a couple of three days before you run. Right. And then you hit, hit mile 20 and you got no carbs left. And that's when they and your fat burn. Yeah. Then there, you hit the wall Then the fat burning isn't turned on because you turned it off because carbs turn it off. And now you got to drag yourself for the last six miles because it takes time for your fat burning to be turned on. So we said, do it this way, carb deplete and run the entire race on oils and take omega-3s because omega-3s turn on fat burning in the body. I call them the fat burning fire starter. And, and not everybody did it because it was completely upstream for what they were being told. But the ones who did, they came back and said, wow, that was awesome. Because after I finished my, running my marathon, I felt I had enough energy to run another one. That's how much of a difference it makes to get your fats right and to make fats your main fuel. But it needs to be based on the two essential ones. You know, there's a lot of people doing keto diets that are not paying attention to the essential fatty acids. Those keto diets get them weight loss, mostly by water loss. <clears throat> they don't turn on fat burning. And long-term, they're bad for health. And it's mainly because, and the reason why people do keto diets, these stupid keto diets, is because omega-3 and 6 are very sensitive, so they need care. And right. they want to make products that you can throw under your bed <laughs> and store them there for five years and not have to take care of them. The issue is life takes care. This is a delicate thing, right? So the, the, the foods that we eat are also delicate. So people say, eat foods that spoil. Just eat them before they do. Right. right? Because you have to take care of your, your lettuce and your, your vegetables, right? They're per perishable. Well, good oils are also perishable. They're like perishable foods. So they, we refrigerate them. We put them in glass bottles. We balance omega-3 and 6 so they don't compete with you, out compete each other. And, uh, and, and we put them in, in, the, in, a, uh, in, a, in a ratio that uh, you get both of them because both are essential. And they're both made with health in mind and they're not damaged. I actually created a whole industry around how to make oils with health in mind. And flaxseed oil was my first oil, but it's unbalanced. Too much three, not enough six. And the sixes you get in your diet are damaged. So I want you off those sixes. 
to, we then, then made a blend, it's called Udo's oil, that is uh, omega-3 and 6 in a ratio that, that the two won't out-compete each other. And we, and we used it in athletes, and they got 40 to 60% increase in stamina in their performance, in their sport, if they did it to exhaustion, within one month of starting to take a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight of this foundation, uh, food oil foundation oil. So I've got to 60%. So that's, that's a, that is <laughs> amazing information. And I've got a couple follow up questions there. So first, yeah. uh, essentially, what you are promoting is a, uh, a ketogenic diet, because you are burning fat, but you don't want to be associated with dirty keto or keto that's not healthy. Is that accurate? Because um, yeah. you're probably in ketosis? <laughs> Uh, not sure because the key is not the key for me is not ketosis. The key for me is to optimize your essential nutrients because that's important for health. Right. And get enough fat. So fat is my main fuel. Like in my house, I don't have, I, I don't have noodles or potatoes or bread or, you know, I eat them sometimes I go out and eat some. Right. But I don't have those. I don't have them in my house. I've got a ton of vegetables and there's some carbs in the vegetables, of course. And I've got the oils and I've got all my herbs and spices because I'm, I'm really big into oils, and, uh, the herbs and spices that have unbelievable health benefits. And uh, and then I have fruits and some, some, some fruit as well. So I get some carbs from the fruit, too. Okay. So I don't pay attention. I, I'm not doing, I'm not peeing on a, on a, on a stick to see if I'm in keto. I'm not, I'm not, keto is not my goal. Health is my goal. Keto is not necessarily health. Understood. Okay. Yes. But, but if you look in nature, before we had agriculture, we didn't have fields of wheat and fields of potatoes, the starchy foods. Right. You know, we ate lots of greens because they were greens around and occasionally we could kill an animal with a rock and so we may have some meat occasionally but mostly probably plant-based roots and and stems and flowers and leaves and seeds and nuts and you know like that and it was not based on uh let's eat in nature and then we'll be keto Understood. just eat just just eat eat fresh things in nature and the body will take care of you know, life, life created a system that works when you live in line with nature. It doesn't have to be keto. It's okay if it's keto, but it's only okay if it's keto if you make sure you get the omega-3 and 6s in. And most people doing keto diets are not doing that. Right. So probably like myself, <laughs> I know you wrote an article on your website about how coconut oil is not all it's cracked up to be. And yeah. so I think your, your conclusion there was that it doesn't have enough of those essential oils in it. I know I've been it, putting some in my it, coffee, but it has, it has it has almost none. It has almost none. Coconut has almost none. And the a guy wrote a book on coconut. He made every claim for coconut that can be legitimately made for omega threes on the basis of existing research, and there was no research to back up all the claims he made. And that that's why that's how coconut became really popular, but it's being misrepresented. And uh, and if you put if you put uh, omega three and omega six in your in your coffee, then you're getting <clears throat> at least as much energy, probably more because they're better at at burning your fats. You still get the stimulation from the caffeine, and you get a you get a drink that is better for your health. And I think that's a, that's a really good, that's a really good uh, change to make. All right. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, and, and with something like, um, flax, flaxseed oil that you mentioned, can you get the same yeah. that's from, from like flax meal or ground flax seeds? Um, do you still get benefits from those? Like I put them in my uh, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you use flax meal, most of the oil has been removed. Okay. So that's going to be different. If you get the seeds, then you're, see, when, when we squeeze oil out of the seed, what we're doing is we're concentrating the oil. So you're going to get more of that, but we're leaving the protein and the fiber and the minerals and all of the rest of what's in the seed behind. 
So if you want to, if you, if so for performance, this is really a good thing to do for energy. That's a good thing to do for health in general. The seed is more nutritious and more balanced. So what I say to people is look, get all the seeds and nuts you want to eat. But if your skin is still dry and you'll notice that more in winter and in the desert than you will in summer in, or in humid climate. If your skin is dry, you need more oil. That's how, that's how we measure it. And if you're getting enough oil, your skin will be soft and velvety. I cannot get my skin soft and velvety, even in summer when I need less oil than in winter, uh, just by doing the seeds. Because if, I, if I, I've tried it with sunflower and sesame and flax seeds in the same ratio we use in the oil, right. just to see. <clears throat> and my skin got drier. And the thing is, you can only get about five ta or six tablespoons of flax because it absorbs six times its volume in water because the, the fiber in it swells up. So how many, how many, so I couldn't eat more than that. So six tablespoons of flax and three tablespoons of sunflower sesame. So that's nine tablespoons of, of the seeds. And it wasn't enough to get my skin soft and velvety in summer. I did it in California. Okay. So, pe so people often say, well, why don't you just eat the food? Because that's the way nature made it. And my view is that nature's mandate is not optimum health. Nature's mandate is you should be healthy enough to grow up. You should be healthy enough to have kids. You should be healthy enough to be around till the kids don't need you anymore. Uh, now you're probably 35 or 40 if you're starting early, right? Right. And, and when your kids don't need you anymore, then nature doesn't need you anymore. So then it's like recycling time. How do you recycle people before they're 80 years old? But the way you recycle people is you have them less than optimally healthy so that as the machinery runs down with age, it runs out to no, not working anymore earlier. So we're cheating nature a little bit by some of the things we're doing. But we're also doing a lot of things where we're trying to cheat nature and we're really screwing ourselves up, <laughs> right? So, and, and yeah. To, uh, another <laughs> follow-up question. So I'm I'm one of those uh, late late starters as a, as a parent. Uh, you know, I've got a a two-year-old and a, and a two-month-old. Um, How old are you? And, and you know, when I think about their nutrition, obviously, like the the first year, you know, if you can do it, breast milk is great. But after that, um, it seems like kids are. Uh, it seems to be like a, a carb centric diet for kids. So do the same rules say, apply for kids? Says, says who, who says it's carb centric? Uh, it, it's so it seems like society kind of. Uh, sure. Of course, because, yeah, because the, <laughs> if, if the kid is fat, you'll have more problems and the doctor will make more money and the pharmaceutical company will do very well. No, I have a, I have a grandson. He's now three. He started, I eat broccoli. I love broccoli. And so I eat raw broccoli and I mix, I, I dip it in tahini that I've dumped the, the sesame oil out of, put my oil in, put all my spices in. So I'll eat the sticks of, the, of, of uh, you know, break the swigs of uh, broccoli, dip it in the stuff and eat it. And it's, it, to me, it's like heaven. So my, my grandson sees me eating broccoli so I gave him a piece, he ate it. <laughs> and now he asked for it. And the kid's now, he's just turned over three. But he was doing that when he was like, the moment he could walk, the right. moment we could communicate. He saw me do it, it's like monkey see, monkey do. So what I'm recommending to you, whatever age you are, be the monkey and let the kid follow your monkeyness. So if you create good habits for yourself, the kid will suck them up just out of being in that environment. All right. right. Because, they, because the kid's not coming in at two, two years old and saying, uh, oh, I want that like Ephemil or Enfamil or whatever crap they have in, on the shelf. He's not coming in and saying that. Right. You know, even your dogs will eat vegetables if you, if you eat vegetables, right? Because they're, they're, they're part of your, your circle of friends, right? Right. And, and, and even cats will eat, eat vegetables. And you know they're carnivores, right? Dogs, dogs less than cats, but cats are carnivores. 
they'll eat, you know, if you're veg vegetarian, I, I know have a number of vegetarian friends, their animals eat vegetables. And are they healthy? Yep, they're healthy. <laughs> Healthier than they are in some of the foods. Some All right. The, some of the packaged foods, some of the processed so, foods. Uh, anything else um, that's important <clears throat> for folks to know on the kind of uh, physical health side before we switch into the, the mental health side? <clears throat> yeah, the second, the, 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 the other thing that I've done uh, that I don't have a book on, the book Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill is about fats. And it's a classic, basically. We sold a quarter million copies. It's a, it's a really cool book. Uh, I've, I've also worked with digestion because I think that's the second most neglected area. Right. And so I've worked with digestive enzymes and probiotics and fiber. And then I also, then the third one was, well, greens are the, are the uh, foundation of everything on the planet. Uh, and uh, so we made greens, like greens that pe people can take when they're traveling. And so they get, some, they get some control over their food supply if they're interested in health and they're living a crazy lifestyle where they're, dry, where they're flying around and getting into places where you're not sure you can eat the food and though you don't know what you're getting. So you basically put it in your suitcase and you take your food supply with you. So we did that as well. And I've worked with a number of other things, worked with animals uh, and, and health. So I've done quite, quite a bit. And now I'm into really into herbs and spices. So, um, but anyway, all of that, uh, udoschoice.com is where all my, pro my products are. And you can see, you can read about them and, uh, and, it, and if you were to mention like one that um, people shouldn't <laughs> live without, is it, is it, is it some of the oils that you have? So I, sorry, if, if, oh. if you had to recommend like one or two that people couldn't live without. Uh, uh, well, you, you know, you can't live without uh, good oils. So, and that's the most neglected area. 99% of the population doesn't get enough omega threes. That's why I started with that. This is like quite deliberate. Uh, and then the second thing is digestion. And because we cook our food or when we cook or fry our food, we destroy the enzymes in the food, in raw food, and right. kill the probiotics on raw food. So those two should be replaced because they're super important for health as well. So, you, and you can't do, you know, you can't say, well, if you're deficient in 30 of the, of the 50 essential nutrients, but you only gonna you only want to take one. Which one would you take? Right? No, you can't do it that way. You're still gonna you're still gonna die. You got to get them all, and you got to optimize them all. And fundamentally, I'm I'm not interested in what's the minimum I can do. That's the, the Russian roulette question. I call it. Right. You know, uh, you, you know how safe is it to put a gun to your head if one chamber if one chamber if five chambers are empty? Well, you have one sixth of of a chance of killing yourself, right? Well, there, and the Russian roulette question is, what can I get away with? Right. And the, and the truth is you don't get away with anything. So you, you really have to, if you want optimum health, you got to do all the things that optimum health requires. And you could start as your first thing. You, I would say oil is the first. You notice the difference. Uh, and when you notice the difference, it opens the door for you to, to take the next step. So I would say do, the, do that first, but don't make it the only thing you do. Okay. I hear you loud and clear. So okay. um, I know you're, you're, you're passionate about total body and mental health. So let's, let's shift gears yeah. a little bit, especially during yeah. a stressful time with, uh, you know, yeah. the, the news blaring in the background and people concerned about finances and everyone's stressed out and anxious. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about how we can optimize our mind and go inward in this time that the world okay. seems to be slowing us down deliberately. I, th I think the most important thing to understand right off the bat, before you do anything, whether you're freaked out or not, there is something in you that is not affected by any drama, any trauma, any coronavirus, something in you is not affected. So what, what is not affected? Well, your awareness, awareness is not personal awareness is everything is aware that's right. why people have said oh the whole universe is alive what does that mean so awareness is the container within which everything else happens so it's the deepest place you can go so if you if you bring your awareness to the deepest place in your being it doesn't die even it never gets sick 
it's there is no viruses there. There's just a calmness. There is a peace. There is a there is a wholeness. There is a presence there that is so beautiful. And the second one is life energy. You know, if you sit down still and you bring your awareness inside, you can see light in in your darkness, and you can hear sound in your silence, and you can feel love in your emptiness, and you can even taste sweetness in the blandness. But our senses, they, they measure energy. They, they monitor energy. They, we usually use them outside. We never use them inwardly. Is, this is a really good time. I, 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 love, I love the corona thing in a, in, in a way. There's something in it that is super incredible. <clears throat> Within a matter of four months, Corona, a critter that isn't even really alive, right? Because it it needs you know it needs to needs parasite a somebody. So yeah, it's not even really alive. <clears throat> Has done something that all of the wise people and all of the governments and all of the churches and all of the masters, Buddha and Christ and and Krishna and Ram and Lao Tzu and all of those guys have never accomplished in their entire lifetime, which is what? Which is to stop the world, is to stop all of humanity stop around, the, around the world. Make them slow down. Make them, give them the opportunities to sit still and discover their own magnificence in the stillness. And make it really clear that life is more important than money. Now, that's, that's like, and you know, and not only that, Corona has used the least spiritual people, the greediest people, the most powerful people to make that happen so that you can sit still and discover the master within yourself, which is called life, which has always run the show and is running the show right now and is running the show if you have Corona and is running the show if you don't have corona, if you're going to get corona, if you've already recovered from corona. Life has run that show forever and ever and ever and ever. And you have never been in charge. You as, a, as your belief system and you as your body, you have never been in charge. Now that lesson is, in, is a possibility in this crazy corona pandemic. We could reset the entire world. And instead of living by greed and fear, we could live by peace, contentment, and cooperation. It's always been in us, but something has stopped us so that we can, that we, it's like we get the whole world, the whole human race has got a time out. You know, when, yeah. when I was a kid in Germany, they say, go in the corner, in the ecke. That's what they say, in the ecke. Right? And I'd go and sit in the corner and then I'd look at the patterns on the walls and I, I would entertain myself anyway. So I never felt very punished. But literally, we have, we've been put in a timeout. And you can't blame anybody for it, really. Right? So we can't even do that. And that opens the door for us to change the way that we live our lives. We are peace in our essential being we are love in our energy when when i'm in touch with the love inside of me which by the way is beyond the mind right because <clears throat> i have to step out of my thought process and step into pure experience when when i feel connected to the energy that is my life i feel perfectly taken care of it has taken perfect care of me through my war th through all my dramas and all my traumas, through this one as well. And when I feel cared for, guess what? It's not about me anymore. So I will spend my time getting to the place where I feel cared for. And now I look around and say, okay, what needs to be done around here? Okay, where can I help? Because there's nothing else left to do. Right. As long as I don't feel taken care of, I'm always going to try and extract something from, every, from everything I do. You know, so, so you're my, so as long as I don't feel cared for, even though I am, but if I don't go there and don't feel it, I'm always going to be a getter. And the moment I feel cared for, 
I become a giver because it's not about me anymore because I have more than enough because you know what? Even in Corona, you can't pay your rent. You've still got air to breathe. You still got water to drink. It's piped into your house, right? You, you, you still find food to eat. If you have no food to eat, you can eat some of the weeds. Dandelions are really good food. You know, and I, I go around outside where when I go outside, there's all kinds of things to eat. Pine needles are good food, right? And it might not be, it not, might not be a, a turkey feast, right? But, but it'll keep you alive and, and it's probably healthier for you, for you than the turkey. Interesting. All right. So you just, you just packed a, a whole new philosophy about how we can reboot our earth. So I'll yeah. un- unpack that yeah. a little bit because I think it is a, a great opportunity for us yeah. to reset our priorities. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, the two questions I have is, um, one, how does a, a lay person that may have a sense about, you know, what meditation is and what going inward is, yeah. how do you invite them inwards? And then the bigger question I have is, how do we not spoil this opportunity? Because there's a, there's a cynic inside me that says, yeah, this is a great momentary relapse, but I don't know if I've got faith in like the greater uh, good to actually reset systems in a meaningful way. So those are, those okay. are things that came okay. up. Well, well, let me start with the second one and then remind me what the first question was. Second question, the cynic in you. See, you're not responsible for resetting 8 billion people. You're only responsible for resetting yourself. Right. And in the midst of however crazy way people live, you have the choice to say, I'm going to live honestly. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do what needs to be done. I'm going to be committed every day of my life to tap into the place where I feel cared for. And I will live my life from there. And I'm committed to that from now until the day I check out. Why not? Why not? Because the experience is amazing. Right. Like to feel cared for feels a whole lot better than to feel you're missing something. Something's not right. You know, oh, God. And not only that, it makes your life easier. First of all, it gives you a safe place. Right. That's useful to have when the shit hits the fan, so to speak. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. But it, it just feels good. It feels good. And it feels whole. And when you feel whole and you find out, you know what? There has never, ever been anything wrong with you. Ever. No matter what anybody else said. No matter what you said to yourself. Even if you had bad feelings that led to bad thinking that led to nasty words that led to destructive activities that had destructive consequences but you're not your feelings you're not your thoughts you're not your words you're not your actions and you're not the consequences you are life in your essence you are life you th- you live like you were the body but you are life and there has never ever been anything wrong with life and when people get that and they go to that place and they feel it, you know what happens? Their feeling changes, then their thought, thinking changes. You know, like if you go to that place, the critic in you will quieten down, right? Yeah. So their, their, their words change, their actions change, and they become remarkably cooperative. Wow. But it's homework. It's homework. And no matter what anybody else does, you are responsible only for your homework and how you show up in whatever kind of a world we're going to end up with at the end of this. And guess what? Eight billion people can do exactly that. Mind their own business, create their own transformation. This is the moment of transformation. And we were 200,000 years overdue for it. Right. Right. Because a monkey got out of bed on the wrong side and it was all, always fear and power and, and, and greed and not enough, and always go out, never go in, right? The reset is, now we're going to start by going in, reconnecting to life, reconnecting to the master inside, because we were all born with the master inside. Mm -hmm. That master runs everything. It's actually omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient inside of your body. Knows everything, is all power, and is everywhere present. That's the definition of God. God in you is life, runs the sh- weighs nothing, runs everything, right? And whether you believe it or not, or you agree to it or not, or you practice it or not, it's still true. At the end of life, somebody 
measured last utterances. Guess what the biggest last, last utterance was? Oh God! No, it was oh shit. Okay. And and I when I when I heard that I just thought it was so funny. I said, well, why would somebody just at the moment when they're dying? Why would they say oh shit? You know, because realization. Oh, because they realized that they were never in control. They always lived by grace. And they get it the moment that they realize they have no control over the process when they're checking out. It's like the, ba it's like the big awakening <laughs> when you're dying, right? And the truth is, you're living by grace anyway. How do you know? Do you think, do you think a drug that, that is going to fix your corona? No, you don't know. You don't really know. You can, whatever drug it is. Do you think hot water will fix it? You don't know. What you can do is do, live in line with nature, make your body as strong as you can, right. but, but you're still living by grace. Right? The universe brought you in, and the universe will take you out. And it's okay. It's really okay. And in the, mid, in the midst of that, you have the opportunity to fully enjoy the gift that a human being is made out of light, oxygen, water, and dust, food, okay, right? And it's been all mixed up to make this, and you can feel, and you can see, and you can enjoy, and you can walk, and you can talk, and you can dance, and you can be stupid, you know, it's like all of this made possible. It's not possible for water to do that by itself. It's right. not possible for oxygen to do it by itself. It's not possible for dust to do it by itself. It's not possible for light to do it by itself. But when they all get put together in this way that has a long history, because you're the end product of a very successful experiment that goes, I don't know how far back, probably to the Big Bang if there was a Big Bang, because we weren't there, right? You know, that has a history, and here you are. And even the fact that you can inhale is amazing. And then exhale is amazing. So, they, so what do you do to get to that place? Well, what I say is sit down, get really comfortable, but be alert and close your eyes. And, and see how still you can become. Breathe really lightly. Try to be aware of your entire body. See how still you can become. See how deeply still you can become. See how long you can be still. Because we're restless, right? See how long you can be still. And in that stillness, Look around, listen into that stillness, look into that stillness, feel into that stillness. That's where you'll find yourself. Everything you've always deep down wanted is present in the space your body occupies. But you have to sit still to tap, to connect into that space. And in that space, out of that, in that space, you'll discover all your insights. You know, when you have insights, you know, you don't, you don't figure out insights. They just come right. to you uh -huh. because they're already all there. Everything that God knew is already inside of you. <laughs> everything that, you know, everything that Einstein did, it's, it's already present in you as an experience. And Einstein talks about his process. He says, he says 99 times I think and think and think and I get nothing. And then one time I become still and float in silence. And the answer comes to me. <laughs> so this was not like, wow, he's a genius. No, life is the genius. Even if your brain isn't working, life is genius. Because look at what, what it can hold together. Look at what, what it can all do. You know, 98% of the atoms in your body are removed and replaced every year. Life is taking care of that. You don't even notice. It's no. so subtle. <laughs> you don't even notice, you know, and like there's only 2% of you left from who you were a year ago. Only 2%. So it's a huge, a major construction site. And it's happening so perfectly that you don't even notice.
that so, they had to that they had to make crazy instruments to measure it, to tap it, you know, to figure out. But how how you know your your digestive tract lining turns over every four year, four days. Every four days. It's amazing. You know, uh, uh, twelve times your weight in water goes through your body. <laughs> you know, you're drinking, you're peeing it out, and it's washing everything, and it takes part in all the chemical reactions, right? And you don't know that unless you study that. But you know what? The, the, this is a miracle. There's like 8 billion miracles like this. And the rest of the miracles are in the form of trees and shrubs and flowers and, and animals. And, right? And you look at this. Oh, here's the treasure on this planet is life in its various forms right. in the creatures. So if there's a purpose to life, number one, is to be fully present in your in your own nature to because only you can experience that gift in you right if you don't experience it it's a it's a wasted gift nobody else can experience it for you that's number one and then number two is be kind to the rest of the creatures on the planet it's not that complicated and we maybe we need to go from greedy killers to grateful gardeners in that process that's part that's part of the transformation but the thing is that's so beautiful is you're you're responsible only for your transformation and your transformation will influence others in the same direction you are the leader you are you know and you lead people whatever your state of being is you lead them toward that state of being but everybody ultimately has the control and has the responsibility and has the ability to, to go into the transformation. The transformation is only a movement of awareness. Nothing has to change other than that my awareness is in the peace inside instead of worrying about corona or the war, right? Because there's always something on the outside. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, right? Yeah. No, I think that's, that's beautiful. And then, and then to bring that peace proactively into your into your uh, uh, into your actions and into your interactions and into your relationships and into your work. You bring that in. People want satisfaction from a job. No, 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 no. There's no satisfaction in a job. Job is just some shit that needs to be done, right? You bring satisfaction into the job. That's where the satisfaction in your job is going to come from. And that satisfaction is already within you. Go to it and bring it out into the world. I feel like we just exploded out into the universe, went to some <laughs> molecules, <laughs> yeah. got the answer of life. And basically, uh, that's all. Basically, awesome. yeah. It's a great way to land the plane. And um, I want yeah. to thank you for, for sharing your wisdom on health. Um, and that was a beautiful um, uh, monologue uh, about how to. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I didn't want to interrupt you because uh, you're, you're yeah. on a roll. But. Yeah. Um, if folks want to learn more, um, I know I've got a um, uh, giveaway with your uh, book, Total Sexy Health and Mini Course. Um, so folks can um, check out the, the show notes for that. Yeah. I highly recommend yeah. that. Yeah, and Total Sexy Health, just the book on Total Sexy Health mm -hmm. is an overview of, of the, whole, the whole story. It's about nature and human nature. There's eight parts to it. It's the subtitles, the eight key parts designed by nature. Each one of them needs attention. You mm -hmm. want to live a whole life, you need to give them attention. It's an overview. It's a pretty inspired, uh, not very big book, and uh, there's a lot in it. It's beautiful. Well, well worth reading, especially when, when you pay nothing for it. Yes, when it's and free. If, and, and, while you, and while you're waiting out the corona thing, you, you got time put that on the put that on top of your list of things to do while you're not doing anything beautiful beautiful well Udo, thank yeah. you so much for for sharing your time and your wisdom with us i know the audience is going to get right. so much value out of it and it was great connecting with you all right thank you ben all right take care sir bye-bye thank you <laughs>